If you need data protection for your KVM standalone environment, then Store Backup and Recovery is one of your options. Let's see in this video how it can protect your virtual machines. Let's log in to the admin console. And the very first step actually is to see obviously the dashboard. Uh, in my environment, I have multiple hypervisors. I have one node. Node is a data mover. You can have more than one. And uh, server, the, the component actually we are looking at right now, hosts the APIs and the um, control panel. Now, you may want to quickly add um, your source here from the configuration wizard. You can see that there is a wide range of the uh, supported um, virtualization platforms, cloud sources, application uh, using generic mechanism and storage providers. Uh, KVM host can be added quickly from this menu in here and you just need to provide SSH access. So um, a root account in this case with the either uh, public, public uh, key authentication or password. You don't have to change your current um, backup provider. Uh, we can also act as the proxy in this case. So if you have enterprise grade legacy systems uh, such as Dell, IBM, Spectrum Protect, Veritas, Net Backup, MicroFocus Data Protector, then you may also integrate quickly Store Backup and Recovery with such systems. You may also want to use file system, object storage, uh, or some cloud storage if you, if you wish to. Uh, and this would mean that uh, Store Backup and Recovery would act as a standalone uh, hypervisor. In the virtual environment, uh, you have the instances list in this case, but the very first step would be probably to add your KVM host in here. So in the K hypervisors tab, you need to create and click KVM. This is a standalone KVM server. So even though uh, KVM is a base for multiple different platforms that we support, every single platform has its own backup mechanism, uh, own APIs. So KVM standalone means libvirt in this case. And we are um, just, we just need to provide the credentials for the host. If you have a custom user for running QMO virtual machines, then um, VM owner here and VM owning group is also needs to be specified. And very important thing is that for KVM, we support both QCOW2 based files and uh, well, or all files as well, or Ceph RBD. So if you have a Ceph under um, behind the scenes and you connect directly to the Ceph volumes, uh, then RBD is also supported and you can enable it from here so you can later specify your storage provider if needed. Let's run a backup now. So I have um, already run inventory synchronization process which is periodically being invoked. Being if you don't need it, you can also run it directly from the infrastructure uh, from here. Um, that invokes additional task. And here I have the task console. So task console allows me to see what is happening in the system. In this case, I have the workflow execution, which means that underneath I'm going to have multiple tasks, like for backup, for instance, that um, are going to, to, to be executed one by one uh, in the complete workflow. In the instances view, Mm, this inventory synchronization has already scanned my KVM uh, virtual machine. I have already one Alpine instance in here. This one is small. Anyway, we can run an mm, incremental backup right now. Uh, this again creates additional backup workflow this time. And underneath, we are going to have multiple tasks such as export to export data and later store the data in your backup provider. So if you have the S3 object storage, it would, it would transfer data to your S3 in this case. Actually, S3 is not only cloud storage. You, can, you may have the object storage with the S3 um, compatible APIs. Uh, that is an on-prem installation in this case. So notice that my export has just uh, started. So let it run. And here in the details, I noticed that I have some statistics. I have the daily activity. I have already run few backups. 
Uh, especially important may be the backup time because it also gives you the rough idea what is happening, which phase of the backup took most of your time. And at the bottom you may want to just uh, see the details of your backups. We support synthetic backups as well, so if you have the let's say XFS uh, or data domain underneath or NFS for that too, you may use it as the synthetic storage and in this case restores will be definitely quicker. They will not have to merge all of the chains of these backups uh, and you will uh, ha have also option for forever incremental backup approach. Disk tabs also allows you to exclude additional drives if you don't need them and settings allow you to customize, uh, well, change the policy and optionally invoke some custom commands before and uh, after snapshot takes place. So my backup has already um, been done here in the restore window. Now I notice that I can um, specify which backup I would like to restore. I have few of them. I would like to specify also the hypervisor to which I would like to restore the, the backups and I can customize the disk layout so I can have the option to um, specify where the actual this, this uh, QCAL2 files are going to land on my KVM hypervisor during the restore. Let's change the name so it's going to be restore let's say 2 and invoke the restore. So this again uh, enqueues the, uh, the additional uh, workflow and tasks in the, in the console. So uh, I will have restore, which basically from the synthetic backup provider doesn't need to merge the data. And uh, it's actually ready already. So, so it's uh, supposed to be um, quickly, um, quickly processed. And then we have the import phase, which actually pushes the data back to the hypervisor. In my case, restore has uh, took only four seconds, and then I have the import phase. For KVM environments, we also support the file level restore capabilities. So uh, in the mounted backup section, uh, you may see additional mounted backups. That's how it is called. And in the instances view, it actually can be invoked with this third button on the list. So if I have a KVM, from the list, this would be the, um, the mount option. And um, you actually can either restore um, file systems automatically. So you have this single root file system view. You have the option to manually specify which file systems do you need or share complete drive over SCSI, which may be quite important if you have Windows guests inside your KVM environment. Uh, so that later you can use this iSCSI uh, block device mounted in other guest window, let's say windows, and uh, restore data directly on the guests uh, on the guest machine. Obviously, you don't want to execute backups manually, so we provide the backup SLAs in here. And backup SLAs allow you to define um, when actually this, this data is going to be, to be backed up and where. So in the, um, let's say, KVM SLA, I have the option for the auto assignment of the virtual machines, which means that you are able to um, automatically assign based on the Name convention, naming convention if you, if you have such in your KVM environment. Um, and you can specify multiple rules. So each rule, notice that I can add more in here, each rule allows me to define where the backup is going to be um, stored, according to which schedules, and how long will the data be kept on this backup uh, destination. Optionally, I also are I'm able to um, enable the secondary backup destination. So you will have two store tasks, storing data in two locations, um, with later option to choose from which location you would like to restore uh, backups. Our import job is uh, being run, run right now. So now let's check what is happening on my host. This is my KVM host. It's running on the, um, 
on the CentOS actually. Notice that I have my original VM running, I had done some restores earlier and uh, now we are waiting for the data to be, to be transferred to the hypervisor. It doesn't have to be to be to be CentOS, um, um, but anyway, we are focused here on the libvirt uh, libvirt um, compatibility, and that's that's uh, how the backup is being processed. Okay, our virtual machine has been restored. Notice that I have another virtual machine already present on my hypervisor, so the interface is complete. From the store backup and recovery point of view, you can also have additional sources, not only the KVM. So remember that um, KVM is obviously one of your options, but if you migrate to the other hypervisors, uh, store backup and recovery can also uh, cover them as well. Um, using the same probably backup destination that you have already chosen. So uh, thank you for watching this video and I really encourage you to test uh, store backup and recovery in your environment and uh, give us some feedback. Stay tuned for the other videos.